Dreamscape presents Lions and Lace by Megan McKinney, narrated by Lisa Flanagan. To all the nieces and nephews, Jewel, Jesse, Callie, Anna Grace, Sam and Jack, and Zachary Steingrimmer, and to Maggie Caruso and Jenny, we'll see you in heaven, dear friends. Lace. Society was based on a sort of untitled but long-established social hierarchy, from which all random elements were rigorously excluded. It held many attractive people, good-looking, agreeable, well-dressed men and women, but as a society it seemed flat and arid, a Sahara without lions. Mrs. Winthrop Chandler, Memoirs on New York Society Chapter One. Of course, it was raining. From the filmy web of lace at the bedroom window, Alice Diana Van Allen looked down at Washington Square, made dark by looming nightfall and the storm. Below, rain pounded the streets, scouring the herringbone pattern of the paving stones. Above, Wind kicked at the skeletal trees in the square, causing the gas lights of the street behind them to blink through the shaking claws of their branches. Not a soul was about. Even the hack stand stood empty. All its cabs dispersed to carry pedestrians caught in the bad weather. She stared out the wet window panes, hugging herself as if she were cold. The storm was an omen. But even believing this, she could not change her mind. She was going to the ball tonight. A small, wry smile touched her lips. The dream she'd had last night was an omen, too. She hadn't had it in such a long time. She'd almost forgotten about it. Then, with tonight's worries on her mind, she must have conjured it from her deepest thoughts. The dream was always the same, and even now she found it hard to resist its images. Succumbing to it, her green eyes warmed, and her face took on an ethereal expression, as if she were far away. A heavy burst of rain pelted the window and thrust her thoughts back to reality. Disgusted with herself for daydreaming at such a crucial hour, she turned from the window to head toward her lace-draped dressing table. But the opulence of her bedroom, especially in contrast with her reverie, almost repulsed her. The bedroom was beautiful, appointed with all the luxuries a wealthy young woman could wish for. Just looking at the dressing table proved that. It was kidney-shaped and so heavily festooned and skirted in costly French lace. It appeared upholstered. Its tufted pink velvet seat waited for her like a throne, but she was suddenly reluctant to go to it. Her surroundings were a shocking contrast to the simplicity and charm of those of her dream. The white clabbered house was what she always dreamed about, and she had dreamed about that house last night. It was a house so spare and modest. Most in her social circle would be embarrassed even to dream about such a dwelling, let alone wish to live there. But wish it she did, fervently. She loved that little white house perched atop the green grassy hill and gleaming beneath the blue sky. She had never been to such a house. But she thought about it so often, she could almost smell the scent of apple blossoms that surely drifted on the breeze from the orchard, and she could almost hear the snap of clean linens she pictured fluttering on the line behind the house. She loved the place. Not so much for what it was, but for what it contained. She closed her eyes, willing herself to stop her thoughts. It wouldn't do to linger in reveries. They weren't destined to come true. Wishing for them would only cause unhappiness. She opened her eyes, intending once more to take her seat at her dressing table. But the wealth of her bedroom again seemed to overwhelm her. She glanced around, hating the oppressively large cabbage roses on her wallpaper, the gaudy chintzes covering the furniture, the heavy rose velvets and silk fringes swathed across her Duncan Fife bed. It was all wrong. Though she'd grown up in this room, she knew it wasn't right for her any longer. Now she wanted other things, like green hills, blue skies, white houses.